the column is expected to rotate in the H directions. Therefore, in this case, the H will be equals to 0 0.35 meters. If the columns is arranged in the other directions, the B and H will alternate each other. From the equation here, BH power 3 divided by 12, you will get the second moment of initial of column. The stiffness of the beam AB, BC and CD differs by their respective span. Using the equations K equals to EI per L, you will get the stiffness as listed here. Same process goes to the columns with the height of 3.5 and 4. You may round the number into the three significance figures as the cell in the Excel here is respectively small. The exact number is not clearly shown. Next, you need to create a table for you to carry out the moment distribution analysis. There are four joints here, A, B, C and D, as indicated here, A, B, C and D. At the joint one, there is a columns and a beam. As reflected here, the columns here represent the summations of the upper and the lower columns. As for joint B here, there will be beam on each side, beam BA and beam BC as given here, and there is a column in the middle. Same goes to join C and join D. The stiffness here will be based on the stiffness calculated just now. The column here will be the summations of the upper and lower column, while the beam AB here refers to the stiffness KAB. As for the join B, the column here refers to the summations of the upper and lower column. The stretch BA refers to the KBA, while the stretch BC refers to the KBC. Same calculation steps go for join C and D. After you have determined the stiffness of the members, now you need to deal with the distribution factors. The equations for the distribution factors it will be divisions of the stiffness of the member divided by the stiffness of all the members at the joint. Taking the joint A as an example, there will be a column and a beam. So you will use the stiffness of the beam divide with the total of the stiffness of the beams and columns, you will get 0 0.61. As for the column, you use the stiffness of the column, divide the summations of the stiffness of the columns and beams, you get 0 0.39. This means that for the moment acting at the joint here, the beam will take about 61% of the moments while the column will contribute 39% of the moment resistance. Now we look into the joint B. The distribution factors for the stretch BA is determined by dividing the stiffness here with the summations of all the members. Same goes to the columns. The stiffness of the columns divided by the summations of all and 
for the stretch BC is stiffness of BC divided by the summations of O. In this joint, the column will take 20%, the stretch BA will take the 32% and the stretch BC will take 48% of the moment resistance. Same steps goes to point C and D. Once you have done the distribution factors, you need to calculate the design load. There will be maximum and minimum loads. Let's say we are using the load set 1, which will give us the maximum, minimum, maximum as the first analysis load case. By multiplying the respective factors of safety, you will get the loading acting on the members here, S and UDL. It can be converted into a point loop by multiplying the UDL with the span of the members. Next, you need to determine the fixed end moment of the beam members. It is determined based on the equations WL squared per 12. The W is here, the L is here, then you will get the fixed end moment for the stretch AB here, 146.3, and for the stretch BC to be 45 on each end. The respective fixed end moment will be multiplied with the distribution factors in order to determine the amount of resistance required by each member. The negative value is to be multiplied with the fixed end moment as the resistance to the loading. As for the joint B, the fixed end moment here will cancel out each others. Whichever is left over are to be multiplied with the distribution factors in order to generate the resistance contributed by each members. Again, the number is to be multiplied with negative value to demonstrate the resistance of the members. Same calculation steps goes to joint C and D. Your next step will be carrying over of the loads to the opposite joint. It is assumed that half of the moment here will be distributed to the other end. With that, this value is to be multiplied by half in order to obtain the value. Same goes to this to be multiplied by half to be here. A similar step is carried out here and here. Now you have the fixed end moment of 16.2 here. This value is to be multiplied again with the distribution factors to generate resistance to the moment. Again, the leftover of the moments here is to be multiplied with the distribution factors in order for you to generate the resistance. The respective value later will be carried over again and this calculation step will repeat until the value here is very small. The moment acting on the member after distributions are given here. It is calculated as the summations of the entire columns here. And this is the summations of the entire columns here. Repeat the same steps here. As the calculation here is rather tedious, sometimes it is inevitable to have some errors during the calculations. You can always check from the result here. 
the summations of the moment at each joint should theoretically close to zero. Because of the difference in terms of the decimal place, it might not be perfectly zero, but the value will be very close to zero. Same goes to the other joints. Once you have done, you can extract the moment acting along the beam from the tables of distributions. This is obtained from the beam stretch here. The positive value represents the moments in these directions while negative value represents in the clockwise directions. From the free body diagram here, you may consider the member stretch by stretch. Based on the free body diagram, you will be able to obtain the reactions of the members. The reactions for this stretch will be 135.3 and 157.2. As for the reactions here, it will be 67.5 and 67.5. And for this stretch will be 157.2 and 135.3. The summations of the reactions will be the actual load acting on the columns. As we can see here, the middle column will carry a higher actual load than the end columns. Based on the reaction here, you are able to develop the shear force diagram. From the shear force diagram, and based on the loading here, you will be able to determine the point where the shear force diagram intersect with zero axis. You need this for you to determine the mixed bank bending moment. Next, you sketch the bending moment diagram of the beam. The 70 here will be the starting of the bending moment diagram. Minus the area of the shear force diagram, you will get this mixed bend moment. Plus the area of the shear force diagram, you will get this. This number should be the same as the one that analyzed from the moment distributions table. Repeat the same process, you will get the bending moment for the entire beam. With that, you have obtained the reactions of the column and also bending moment of the beam. Now you need to determine the moment of the columns. From the moment distribution tables, you know that the moment acting at the columns are given in the values here. Again, use the principles of the distribution factors. The moment of the column is to be multiplied with the ratio of the column's stiffness divided by total stiffness of both columns. It is in terms of the ratio of the stiffness. For the upper columns, you will use the moment acting on the both columns to be multiplied the stiffness of the upper column divided by the stiffness of both columns. These are the moments acting on the columns as demonstrated in the diagram here. With that, you will need to repeat the analysis for the following load cases such as minimum, maximum, minimum as well as these two load cases max max min and min max max the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram of each load cases are given here you may merge them together to produce an envelope shear force and envelope bending moment diagram 
what you can see here the maximum value of the share it will be 135 and 160 and probably 97.5 and so on so forth same goes to the bending moment diagram you will find the largest value at each position of the bending moment diagram as for the columns you will also determine the maximum value of the columns with that you have completed the analysis of a single level subframe